for Nationals rookie James Wood the task ahead is tall but he's not stressed. James Wood doesn't think he's shy. Hello please click join button to help me get equipments and make more quality videos for you, or you know just to get me a juice. Thanks already. Still the number 2 overall prospect in baseball a baseballing unicorn who made his MLB debut on Monday for the Washington Nationals acknowledges that he comes across as quiet. I just don't really say a lot the 6 foot 7 outfielder told Yahoo Sports during a recent conversation before he was called up. I'm just pretty chill. That's Wood as a person in a nutshell, relaxed low key stress free. The ultimate chiller. Words crawl out of the 21 year old with a Gen Z disaffection that to a cynical ear might sound like disinterest. But don't mistake the easygoing nature for that of a sloth or a laggard. Wood cares. He grinds and he listens. He is reserved but incredibly attentive. Coaches and teammates gush about his character and his work ethic while making borderline irresponsible claims about the brightness of his future. And why wouldn't they? Wood drafted 62nd overall in 2021 by San Diego and traded to Washington one year later has done nothing but drop jaws and turn heads during his relatively short time as a professional. In a remarkably short three years the D.C area kid has gone from developmental pipe dream to franchise altering force. In 52 games the season at AAA before his call up Wood posted a ludicrous 1.058 ops with 10 home runs and almost as many walks as strikeouts. All that despite his being five and a half years younger than the average AAA player. Built like an Olympic volleyball player with track star foot speed and light tower power there aren't many baseball players like Wood. He is now one of only three MLB hitters alongside Aaron Judge and O'Neill Cruz who stands six foot seven or taller. Nobody in the minor leagues who played or coached with or against him forgets watching him run let alone take batting practice. He's a giant you know Jake Lowry the manager of the Loewe Fredericksburg Nats told Yahoo Sports. I always talk about him being like a gazelle in the outfield. It doesn't look like he's running fast but you look at his sprint speed numbers and you're like Jesus Christ this guy is really good. During his debut Monday Wood showcased all the tools that make him a tantalizing prospect. In his first at bat he laced an opposite field single 106.7 miles per hour through the left side. Which to be clear is different than being a generational player. As is the case for any prospect there are landmines and pitfalls ahead. The annals of MLB are littered with shoulda beans. Wood will struggle and adjust and struggle again. His ability to continually adapt and grow at the major league level will dictate how his career unfolds. He knows all of this and is as prepared as anybody. But for the Nationals a club that has wallowed in the muck since its triumphant World Series title in 2019 Woods debut represented the start of an exhilarating new chapter. In July 2022 the Nats smashed the reset button. Less than three years after the red and blue confetti fell at Minute Maid Park the organization faced a hauntingly hazy future. The veteran stars of 2019 had departed in free agency or rusted with age. The farm system depleted by years of win-now trades and poor development couldn't keep the window of contention propped open. And so GM Mike Rizzo and his front office determined that the only reasonable path forward was to trade away Juan Soto already one of the game's best players at 23 years old. In return for what should have been their forever player the Nationals received from the Padres a cornucopia of prospects, Wood pitcher Mackenzie Gore shortstop CJ Abrams outfielder Robert Hassel 3 and pitcher Yarlin Susanna. Wood then a 19-year-old playing for San Diego's low A team in Lake Elsinore, California remembers the trade vividly. He was on a coach bus somewhere in the southern hills of San Bernardino County 30 minutes into a six-hour road trip. All season Soto trade rumors had consumed the sport but Wood wasn't expecting to be traded until that morning when he woke up with a feeling. He was scrolling through Twitter when he saw the news and found out he was headed home to DC. But first he had to wait out the drive. The trade wasn't yet finalized and the team wasn't going to turn the bus around. Upon arrival in Visalia Wood took an Uber to Fresno flew to San Diego Ubered back to Lake Elsinore packed up his things drove to San Diego and then flew to join the Loe Nationals affiliate on the road in Kinston, North Carolina. 
The entire experience was a whirlwind but would per usual was unfazed. Looking back he laughs at that absurd day of travel. I just kinda had to wear it he said with his typical nonchalance. He homered two days later in his first game as a Nats minor leaguer. He came into the office and obviously he had no nationals apparel and stuff Lowry remembered. And you know we're on the road. So we're outfitting him with whatever stuff we have, a couple of shirts some shorts. It's mostly too big or too small. And he's just like bro I'll take whatever. That's how Wood has always been, amenable low maintenance exceedingly kind. It's an approach fostered in part by his upbringing. His two older sisters Sydney and Kayla were both highly competitive basketball players. Sydney was the team captain and an All Big Ten honorable mention at Northwestern. James' dad Kenny Wood was a legendary high school hooper on Long Island who went on to become a school hall of famer at Richmond University. His mom Paula works in the global health space and has dedicated much of her professional life to the eradication of dangerous diseases across the world. It's not the type of environment that produces a bum. Accordingly James showed himself early on to be a particularly gifted athlete. Around fourth grade he made the decision to prioritize baseball over basketball for a hilarious simple very on-brand reason. I was better at basketball he recalled but baseball was more fun. As James continued growing so did his talent. He matriculated to St. John's College High School traditionally the top baseball program in D.C. But things didn't really pop off until 2020 after his junior season was cancelled by the pandemic. He put on 30 pounds that year spending the months after lockdown eating like a bear and working out at a church near his house with friends. Playing for an area travel team named the Dirtbags during a high-profile tournament in Georgia called WWBA the 17-year-old Wood took a pitch by his eyeballs and clobbered it into the distance. His teammate Derek Bender now an all-conference player at Coastal Carolina was in the on-deck circle and was left mouth agape completely dumbfounded. That was where the legend of James Wood came alive. He didn't get out that whole tournament Bender said. The kid is six foot seven string bean at that point. He's up there no batting gloves hands are by his damn waist. And he never really swung at pitches up or in that's really why I made that face. Bender was not the first person to make that face in response to